as introduced, the idea behind the machine perception services is to uh, provide a, a common basis of machine perception capabilities that anybody who uses either ARIA devices as a research partner or any data sets that are created from ARIA data um, can build on top of rather than having to like re-implement them or redo them over and over again, right? Um, Richard, in the very beginning, introduced the ambitious mission that we are on with Project ARIA to foster egocentric machine perception on the path to uh, contextualized, personalized AI to that, for that to become a reality. Um, and these are kind of, you can think of them as fundamental building blocks that we think are quite important to build on top of um, and that we want to provide. And we do that by leveraging uh, machine perception algorithms that we have internally in Meta. Um, a lot of them are very similar to what you would find on like AR and VR uh, headsets, for example. Uh, and thus, it's kind of fair to assume that they will exist in the future um, on egocentric uh, devices as well. So as I mentioned, you can get access to them either if you're an approved partner um, and you have your own device, you can collect recordings, upload them to Meta service, get the processing done and get the results back downloaded. We are not keeping any of the data. It's really just ephemerally there to, um, to process the, the data sets. Um, and then second, we're also including the same output in any data sets that are made up of uh, Project ARIA data. All right, um, so what are those uh, capabilities? And you've seen many of these videos before. Um, the first one, uh, super important, just six stuff poses, right? Localization of the device in space. Um, and that is really what powers 3D machine perception. So the first thing we offer here is just for a single recording, basically localize that in a consistent coordinate frame. We are using a proprietary visual inertial SLAM system with the VIO front end, um, plus a backend optimizer that gets sort of the maximum, uh, maximal accuracy out of it. There is both a open loop trajectory and a closed loop trajectory that provides poses in a single drawing coordinate frame for the entire sequence. And it is built in a way that it is really meant to work anywhere and always, right? Um, as, as Richard introduced, it's really important for that uh, personal context that this doesn't just, like these devices and you know, these algorithms don't just work in lab settings, but actually work whatever you do during your normal life, right? Like, doing motions that you would do normally without paying attention for, you know, algorithms to not break. Um, so it's really built to work wherever you wear devices, in, uh, indoors, outdoors, uh, biking, uh, and so on. It's very accurate. Um, the accuracy is about 0.2 to 0.4 percent of, like, translational motion, um, which translates to about 1.5 centimeters in a room about this size, I'd say, um, in terms of global accuracy. Um, and then we also include things like uh, some uncertainty estimates um, and information about when it works and when it you know, sometimes doesn't work. Um, last but not least, because it's all made for multimodal sensor fusion, uh, all the poses are not just for individual frames, but at one kilohertz. So you get poses for every single sensor on the device, no matter whether, whether that's audio or video. Second, um, obviously it's important to get poses also for multiple recordings, either from the same device or from different devices in the same space. Um, this is something that we are uh, working on and I think it's on the roadmap for Q3. So if you're a partner, you can upload many recordings together um, and get them all localized in a single coordinate frame. Um, and here I'm just showing a video from the ARIA pilot data set that did that for, I think, a couple of dozen recordings that were all captured in the same flat. Uh, Prince already uh, teased this a bit. Uh, we're also doing online calibration. Um, one of the you know, requirements for doing this is very, very accurate geometric calibration of all the sensors involved. And as much as we try to make Project ARIA glasses as rigid as possible, it's only so possible in the, in the form factor it has. So there are some deformations if you use it, especially if you, for example, put it on and take it off. So we give, in addition to, to the poses, also a per frame online calibration um, that gives you all the sensor calibrations uh, at, at frame rate, essentially. And just here on the slide, you can see a, a concrete example from an actual sequence, from an actual recording, where the user kind of holds the device in their hands and then puts it on the head. Um, and you can see that actually the, the left and the right cameras bend by about half a degree between them just from that motion. All right, um, I'm not going to go further about the exact output format. We have a beautiful new website that has all the information, um, and you can find all of that there. All right, second up, um, 
I've seen a lot of point clouds in the presentation so far. That's what this one is about. Uh, it's semi point clouds computed effectively from the SLAM cameras as you know, uh, passive stereo tracks. Um, and they provide a really good understanding of the environment that the device is being used in. Uh, they obviously only cover static things, so they don't triangulate anything that's moving. Uh, they also uh, provide 2D tracks. Um, we output not only the 3D points, but also where they are visible in which image, when. Uh, so you can use those as like a sparse optical flow or to get visibility uh, in 3D space. And the whole thing also works outdoors. Uh, here's an example of somebody walking around in Seattle. Um, and this is, the, this is the reconstruction you get literally from somebody walking down the sidewalk with a Project RA device recording. Again, um, all, the, all the details on how it looks like is all on the, on the website. And here's uh, an example that I think Satch already showed um, how that looks like on the Project ARIA pilot data set, uh, bundling together, I think, 20 or 30 different recordings of everyday activities, um, all localized and all with, with point clouds in one frame of reference. All right. Um, so much for the outwards facing sensors. Now, very important, it's also about what the user is doing in the scene. Um, and the first one here, or one of the probably most important signals about what the, you know, the wearer actually cares about is eye tracking. So we provide eye tracking um, as a machine perception service as well. Um, it provides the eye gaze just as a single ray uh, anchored like in between your eyes pointing out in the scene. Um, with an error of about 2%, uh, two, 2 degrees, uh, which goes down to about 1 degree if you do a personalized eye tracking calibration, um, which makes it a bit more accurate. Um, and you can see here in the video how much information it actually gives you about what the person is actually up to. Uh, usually, uh, the eye gaze precedes even what they're doing, so you, so you know what they're about to do. And last but not least, I want to just give a quick teaser about uh, hand tracking. This one is work in progress, so we don't have it quite yet, but we're working on it because obviously hands are yet another really important signal about what the user is doing in the scene um, and can help with a lot of things. And we really want to make it easy for people to build on top of a solid, stable hand tracking uh, algorithm for whatever they want to use with, uh, do with Project Ari afterwards. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Carl to talk about the software ecosystem.